I just want to make sure that everybody has their volume turned to a comfortable level for you. Don't worry about any background noise. We have everybody on mute. And if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and enter them in your Q&A box at the top of your screen. The top of our webinar tonight is Discovering Asthma Triggers. Michael Russell. I am a patient education specialist with PMD Healthcare, and tonight we have a very special guest with us, Mary Ann Leonardo. Mary Ann has blizzard allergies and asthma, unfortunately, her entire life. And tonight she will discuss with us some of the ways that she's learned to decipher asthma triggers along her way. Thank you and welcome, Mary Ann. I am to be here with G Healthcare, personal medical devices for a healthier you. As we discussed, we our webinar today is entitled Deciphering Asthma, Asthma Triggers. Okay, let's get to we need to be. Thank you. Okay, so today we would say that an asthma trigger is anything that brings on those dreaded symptoms of coughing, wheezing, or difficulty breathing. And for those tuning in today, a lot of it may be review for us, but I know that in my preparation for this webinar, I was able to find a vital takeaway or two, and I hope that you'll find something equally of value to you. But as we begin with the symptoms and the most common asthma triggers, listed here as pollen, animal litter, breathing cold air, cigarette smoke, exercise or exertion, reactions to food or medications, waste chemicals. I would add household cleaning chemicals as well, outdoor air pollution and infection. A respiratory infection really had me down for a while this winter. Most of these triggers we could call pathetic. For example, cats may really affect me, but for someone else it would be a range of food or specific medication. Some are considered versatile triggers. For example, exercise or respiratory infection. Exercise, not so much in the sense of your routine exercise, but in terms of the day that you decide to push the window and really exert yourself, or change the duration or intensity of your exercise, that could be when you would bring, a, uh, bring yourself an asthma attack. Also, the respiratory infection, my monologist every fall reminds me that to call them at the first sign of a respiratory infection or chest cold so that we can be on top of it. So we have variables that affect people differently. Some are more patient specific and others are more universal. But the timing feature of asthma is of course underlying susceptibility to airway inflammation. We have uh, an illustration of how these triggers affect us. What's going on inside that airway when these triggers come into play. We could note that inner air inflammation here, that inner lining inflammation, obviously taking up quite a bit of space. All that thick glob of mucus clogging the airway. A third culprit would be that air constriction caused by the constricting smooth lining muscles surrounding the airway. So when this trouble set goes into action, the inner lining inflammation, the mucus, and the airway constricting muscles, that airway narrows and narrows until breathing becomes difficult. It feels like maybe we're breathing through a coffee stirrer. Now, they ask, how is it that sometimes we're affected so quickly? We can go weeks, maybe months without an asthmatic attack, and then it seems to sometimes come on so suddenly. This picture of bucket is going to be an image of a healthy set of lungs. 
plenty of room, plenty of space for airflow, healthy lungs, plenty of room for airway, for, for air to come in and air to flow out. And this picture of the faucet, dripping faucet, would be, for our purposes, a picture of areas and how they affect normal lungs, just one drop at a time, maybe a mere annoyance. But if we have a respiratory condition, well, our lungs or our bucket fills up much faster. And be aware of the bucket levels, because remember, we have the underlying susceptibility and a lot of what's happening is internal until we feel symptoms consciously, we may not know how close we are to the next, or as it were, an attack. is we do have options. Obviously, one of times chosen is the jumping option. And to all of us who have any kind of a chronic illness have at some point a temptation to just do nothing, just deal with it, just write out the next attack or hope it never comes. But that is the most dangerous option. An American Lung Association reports in 2006, there were 1.7 million adult emergency room visits just related to asthma. 1.7 million. In seven, again, the American Lung Association reporting, 3,447 adult deaths due to asthma. And the, in both cases, these are just American statistics. So we see that doing nothing and hoping for the best really can, in one of those statistic cat statistical categories, and we want to avoid that at, if at all possible. So the recommendation would be to go with the double defense of avoidance and medication. Our best defense is to avoid those triggers. And most of us, as, as we get older, we know or have a pretty good idea of what our triggers are, even though some times of the year they may bother us more than other times. Many, of course, would be prescribed by a doctor and taken as directed. So avoiding medication will help to keep us safe. But avoid triggers sounds like negative, and sometimes it does feel like we're avoiding life, especially in that springtime, you want to be going to those, those asthma, I mean, sorry, you want to be going to those, those soccer games, little league games, but a little perspective might help us here. Back day, say, 18th, 19th century, you have read novels from that time period where the attic character is confined to bed or the couch because certain family members are worried that any exertion or stress may bring on an asthma attack, a fatal asthma attack, in fact. But we know now that we have education, we have medication, and there are steps we can take to keep safe, and even small changes can make a big difference. So it's worth our while to deal with those allergens by keeping windows closed during the pollen season, especially during the day. Uh, a rule of thumb is when you're tempted to just let that fresh air in and in the springtime, if your windshield or your dust cloth is bringing that yellow-green dust, it's and it's going to be getting in our lungs too. So we just have to keep the windows closed. Air conditioning can be very helpful, not just in the peak heat season, but all just for air filtering. Here's one of those uh, vital takeaways that I discovered as preparing for this webinar. I, my routine is to take an hour, wash my hair, and set my makeup first thing in the morning before I do my day. But for all those outdoor activities in the fall, when I come home, if I share before going to bed, I can spare myself having to breathe the pollen that's been falling off my onto my pillowcase all night. So a couple of small changes may make a big difference in keeping them safe. How many people who may have pets, we have to take precautions with our pets. Maybe we need to keep them outdoors, restrict them to a few rooms in the house, at least 
some of us, especially who are allergic to cats, have to work at keeping the cat from sleeping on the bed. We wash hands after petting and bathe that pet once a week to reduce dander. Better yet, get someone else to be that pet once a week to reduce dander. I mean, what we can do is deal with the mold. We work clean bathrooms, kitchens, and basements, and keeping well aired, but it's of importance to us with respiratory illness because obviously the molds get to the air and then into our lungs. So, for avoidance, we want to avoid humidifiers, which tend to retain moisture, which again grows those mold spores. In our molds, we want to store chemicals such as insecticides and lawnmower gas in an air away from the home. So we don't come in contact with those fumes. Fires in damp areas will remove humidifiers for the good. Humidifiers can cause us some trouble. Another I'd like to mention to you uh, another suggestion. In damp areas, I use a product called Damp Grid, which I find very helpful. I pick it up at Walmart or Benny's. What it is is crystals which absorb moisture from the air, and then the crystals dissolve into the cup below, and you just pour out the liquid. So a helpful tool in terms of keeping those hard-to-reach, hard-to-get circulation into uh, that or closets or shelf space. Well, related is the fixing of leaky faucets and pipes. But the danger here that, that it's not always obvious is that moisture leaking into under floorboards or into walls and grows those invisible mold spores that do find their way into the air and our lungs. We can remove our limit carpeting in the home. Some people find that very helpful. Of course, to avoid tobacco smoke for a multitude of reasons. And cold air. I'll tell you um, my deep, dark secret is that cold air is what was my excuse for years for not exercising through the new winter. In reality, I can say that a scarf loosely draped around the nose and mouth really does go a long way to allowing me to breathe comfortably as I go for my power walk. Cold infections. To so say are unavoidable, I am very fortunate in that I work in a no germs allowed office, but still those infections make their way into every home every year. And the, one of the things we know we can do is wash our hands frequently. So, we who are tuned into a webinar on this topic of deciphering asthma triggers would all be people who want to be staying active and healthy. And in order to take care of ourselves, we need to exercise regularly. And perhaps we could do a webinar someday just specifically on the topic of enclosed capacity. There are breathing exercises that will help with that. We want to attain a healthy weight. And we will control that acid reflux or hot burn, which for some reason seems often to be a that exists alongside asthma. Of course, fruits and vegetables are a healthy thing for everybody. We love those antioxidants. And then one other thing we can do to stay active and healthy, and this may be a new item for for most people listening, monitor your lung function with a personal spermeter like Spiro PD. All of us have used a spirometer in our doctor's office. The, the machine that's used to test your lung capacity, someone holds the box and they tell you to breathe into a tube and actually you take a big deep breath inhaling and then they tell you to exhale as long and hard as you can. And if you do that three times and then the person doing the test gives the results to the doctor who then explains to you that your numbers are good or bad or declining or stable. And from there, you and your doctor make your asthma management plan for the next few months or the next year. And that may involve medication or more frequent monitoring office visits. 
Then the doctor probably gave you a peak flow meter. I know I had my share of peak flow meters in my, my home. My problem with the peak flow meters, I will confess I never made much use of them because I never trusted them to be a finely tuned instrument. I never was good with paper pencil in that I my results, but then I would misplace the paper. So the next time I took the test, I'd start over on another piece of paper and maybe hold on to that one for a day or two. But my favorite feature of the personal around the Spiro PD that you see in front of you on this screen is that it does the graphing electronically. Don't worry about it. It can hold the results for days, weeks, or months, and then I can electronically upload, I just get into the computer and upload the results, and I can print out a report to take with me to the doctor or email the results in a PDF format to my doctor. So a Spiro PD will give our a personal spirometer like the Spiro PD gives us another tool to monitor our lung function much more closely than waiting for those symptoms to make their appearance. I hope you explore that further when you get a chance. Speaking of exploration, we have here on our last page uh, some resources that help you in your quest for further information and knowledge about asthma, asthma triggers. And then I would just like to thank you all for tuning in to this, my first webinar with PMD Healthcare. I've enjoyed sharing this information with you, and I hope this has been helpful to you. Rebecca? Yes, yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate you sharing all that information with us. Thank you, Rebecca. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so that concludes our webinar tonight. If anybody has any questions, um, feel free to give us a call. If you'd like to speak with somebody, you can call one 888 for you you can also visit us at www.spiropd.com, or you can visit us on Twitter or Facebook. If any questions that you'd like to type in, go ahead and do that now at the Q&A box, which you'll find at the top of your screen. And we thank you all for participating tonight, and we hope to see you again in the future. Bye-bye.